my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, good afternoon. Today, the Catholic Church celebrates the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ, popularly known as Corpus Christi Sunday. We profess our faith in the sacrament of the Most Holy Eucharist, where we celebrate the sacred mysteries of the Lord's body and blood, the real presence of Christ among us, and our salvation, which He gained for us by His blessed passion, death, and resurrection. We also celebrate Father's Day today to honor all fathers of families who, in their own way, continue to provide nourishment and protection to their families. Today, in a special way, we join Vice President-elect Sara Duterte Carpio and guests in offering this Thanksgiving Mass on the occasion of her inauguration as the 15th Vice President of the Republic of the Philippines. The presider of this holy celebration is the Archbishop of Davao, Most Reverend Romulo G. Valles, D.D. Let us begin the celebration of this wonderful sacrament of our redemption as we sing our hymn of praise. Please stand. to the table. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome to the San Pedro Metropolitan Cathedral of Davao. And most importantly, welcome to this Eucharistic celebration this Sunday of the Solemnity of Corpus Christi. This celebration has a special note of joy because we have with us our dear Mayor Indai Sara, Sara Duterte Carpio, who, after this Mass, will make her oath of office as the Vice President of the Republic of the Philippines. In this Mass, we will be praying for her and with her in thanksgiving to the Lord. Let us prepare then for this Holy Eucharist by recalling to mind our unworthiness, our sins, at the same time relying on the mercy and forgiveness of the Lord. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, you, my brothers, brothers and, sisters, and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, words in, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to serve, revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading, a reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. And being a priest of God Most High, he blessed Abram with these words. Blessed be Abram by God Most High, the creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God the Most High, who delivered your foes in your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Princess Princely, bower in the day of your birth, in holy splendor, before the day star like the dew, I have begotten you. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about 5,000. Then he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50. They did so and made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragment, fragments were picked up, they filled 12 weaker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Be seated. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, you who are parishioners and faithful of the Ashrays of Davao, you who are following this live stream liturgy, and you who are dear guests dignitaries and government officials who are from outside of the Ashes of Davao present in this gathering. And most importantly, Mayor Indai Sara, who is with us in this Eucharist, and who, after this Mass, will take her oath of office as Vice President of the Republic of the Philippines, we are honored with the presence of a former president of the country, Madam Gloria Macabal Arroyo, with us this afternoon. We have Bishop Abel C. Apigo of the Diocese of Mati. We have Bishop George Rimando, the Auxiliary Bishop of Davao. And we have Archbishop Emeritus Fernando Capalla, the former Archbishop of Davao, brother priests, religious sisters, and brothers, in the name of the Archdiocese of Davao, I warmly welcome all of you again to this sacrifice of the Mass, 
is indeed a joy to have you in this cathedral this afternoon. Let me tell you this, brothers and sisters. Just when the election campaign period was about to start, I was surprised at the same time deeply moved that Mayor Indai Sara came to see me. Take note that this was not publicized, and I know she didn't want it to be public. It was a very personal visit, and my impression was she did not come for me to bless her and her campaign. She did not ask me to endorse her candidacy with photos to be made public. She did not ask me to pray that she may win. She simply was telling her bishop of her present very challenging situation in life. And without saying it, I felt hoping that I would include her in my prayers. She told me that she did not really want to be in this position. But at the same time, in her heart, she told me, she deeply felt that she is called to serve our people. But the part that really struck me in our conversation was when I commented that, Mayor Indai, this must be a very tough campaign for you, both physically and mentally. And this was her reply. Yes, Archbishop, but I will see to it that I will come home regularly to see my husband and my children. She did not explain to me the whole mechanics of how to do the planned rigorous campaign, but what I heard from her instead was her focus and top priority that is her role as wife and mother. In Daisara, this was for me a very inspiring answer coming from you. Certainly, my dear brothers and sisters, to serve wholeheartedly the whole country at the same time, to be truly a mother and wife to your family. This is a rare role which is not for everyone. On May 13, the Feast of a Lady of Fatima, a Friday, just a few days after the recent national and local elections, I celebrated at the Archbishop's residence chapel a simple Thanksgiving Mass that Mayor Indai Sara personally requested. It was live streamed so that she can follow this Mass in Manila where she was at that time. It was for me a vintage Mayor Indai Sara style personal and simple and restrained public display of faith. After that Mass, I received her call with her thank you, and right away she added, can you block your schedule, Archbishop, on June 19? I would like to request you to preside over another more public Eucharistic celebration at San Pedro Cathedral. And of course, I said yes. Thus, I would like to tell you, brothers and sisters, that the scheduling of this Mass today did not just come 
from those in her staff planning for this event. It is really a very personal request of Mayor Indai. I can only conclude with deep appreciation that for her, in her faith, raising our minds and hearts to the Lord during this occasion is essentially an important and appropriate part of this celebration. Just an aside, I don't often write my homily, but for this occasion, I did for the obvious reason that I am nervous in an excited way. So these notes. Mir and I were deeply touched by this gesture. And what a beautiful day you have chosen. For as I said earlier, this Sunday is the solemnity of Corpus Christi, the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ. A solemnity that underlines the beauty and truth of the presence of the Lord in the Holy Eucharist, in the consecrated bread and wine, becoming now his body and blood in this liturgy. From the liturgy then of this Sunday, may I continue by sharing some thoughts, some reflections, Davao style, of course, mixed with our hearts today are sentiments and thoughts of joy and congratulations. For sure, we are sincerely sharing our collective prayers and best wishes for Mayor Indai Sara. But as I said, I have these particular reflections. First, the reality of the gift given to you, Mayor Indai Sara. The gift to serve. We have often heard that her election as the new vice president of this country is a mandate from our people. It is also described as an honor. It is also seen as a noble obligation to serve, but not often described as a gift. In the context of a Christian faith, to serve is seen as a gift. To be given a chance, such an extraordinary chance to serve, to make a difference in the lives of our people as the second highest government official of our land. This is truly a gift an extraordinary chance to serve. In faith, we say to serve is a gift, a gift from the Lord. It is a gift because through our human service, we bring the love and care, the mercy and compassion of the Lord to our people. One becomes then a servant of the Lord, an instrument to bring his love to our people. With this giftedness, one may say and add also that the Lord trusts us so much to be his servants, as it were, to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. It is also part of our faith to believe that this presence of Jesus in his body and blood in the Holy Eucharist will be in us, inside us, to be part of us in a special way as we partake of this in Holy Communion. The people who partake of this holy sacrifice become also the body of Christ. We are described as the mystical body of Christ, or we say we are the people of God. Today, we also say we are Christified, quite a new 
verb, a new, a new term. Thus, may or in die, it is truly a gift, an extraordinary gift to be a servant to the Filipino people, God's holy people. We know too that the body and blood of Christ is the consequence, as it were, of the sacrifice of Calvary. This gift of the body, body and blood of Christ is given to us in the service of his sacrifice. Mayor in I, the sacrifice of Jesus that gave us his body and blood is the most beautiful model of your service and sacrifice for our country. One may say that you have wonderful models in the lives of our heroes and in the lives of many exemplary public servants, past and present, that you may emulate, yes. But it is no doubt that the sacrifice of our Lord is by far the perfect example of self-giving for the salvation of all. Thus, we pray today and the days to come that as you live out this gift to serve our people, you may always come to Jesus as your most perfect source of strength and inspiration. I heard you on one of the last days of the campaign. I quote, I am not the best, I am not the brightest, I am not the most brilliant candidate out there. Vainted, humble spirit. I am not the most brilliant candidate, not the best out there, pero kung meron kang ipapagawa sa akin, I will move mountains para ma-deliver yan sa iyo. End of quote. I really smiled when I read you saying this. And I remembered what Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew. If you have faith, the size of a mustard seed, smallest of seeds, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Matthew 17, verse 20. Mary and I, keep your faith in the Lord. When the time comes with your faith, you can move mountains as it were to get results not for your own, but truly for the good of our people. Second thought. On the same serenity of Corpus Christi, a year ago today, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, said that the Eucharist, and I quote, the Eucharist is not the reward of saints, but the bread of sinners. The Eucharist is not the reward of saints, but the bread of sinners. What a very comforting truth is this for us, especially for you today, Mayor Inda. I guess the reference to sinners here is not only about big ticket sinners, but mostly for us, common to us, who are tired and hungry along the journey of life. Sinners here mean when we are weakened and discouraged being faithful, being true, being consistent in the way we serve our people. Thus, we come to Jesus in the Eucharist 
the food of sinners. We come to him, the true servant sent by the Father. So, Mayor Indai, I humbly say, when you are tired, when you feel weak in spirit, when you are discouraged, when you see less hope in doing good, when things are not looking good, when what you said, and I quote, Mahalin natin ang Pilipinas. Mahalin natin ang Pilipinas. That seems to be an impossible dream. Come to the Eucharist, the food of sinners, not the reward of saints. For indeed, it was Jesus who said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavenly laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I am gentle, lowly in heart, and you will find rest. Third reflection and last. I was really entertained by the two very young Dava rappers, Word and N and Real J, in the rap performance, Aguila a Tigre, Aguila a Tigre. Huh? There in the rap performance, the line goes, Aguila ng Davao, Aguila ng Davao. No doubt, these young rappers really gave you this very iconic tag, Aguila ng Davao. Many, if not all, will right away have in their minds the Philippine Eagle, whose home is Davao, the image of strength, of endurance, of beauty and majesty, our national bird, in fact, able to soar high. But I would add that very early on, the eagle has been part of Christian art. That very early on, it became a beautiful symbol that points to some particular truth about our Christian life. The eagle in Christian art is used to depict or represent St. John the Evangelist, the writer of the fourth gospel, believed to be the last gospel to be written of the four. Scholars would say that St. John wrote this version of the gospel around the year 100 AD. Thus, very far in time reference from the Christ event, especially what happened in the year 33 AD, the defining event of our salvation, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And yet, John, in his version of the Gospel, has very interesting and deep insights about the words and deeds of Jesus not found in the other three gospel versions, even if he wrote this many years after the Christ event. Thus, it is said that John has the eyes of an eagle, which we know can see very clearly from up high many things on the ground. Mayor Indai, may you truly be the Aguila ng Dabao as you serve as Vice President of our country. May you see clearly the needs of our people. May you have eagle's eyes to see the true needs 
of the young people you will be serving, in particular as Secretary of the Department of Education. As we know, these needs can be clouded, can be obscured, can be deliberately distorted or hidden for many reasons like fake news and vested interests. The needs can be overwhelming to the point of making us feel small and inadequate. During these moments, may you have the sharp eyes of the eagle, never to miss the ever-abiding presence of Jesus in our midst, and trust that he will be working through you. Like in today's gospel, the situation was quite desperate. The need of food for the hungry, huge crowd following Jesus, which was no doubt beyond the means of the apostles, that only five loaves and two fish. But the apostles, in the end, saw with the sharp eyes of faith who Jesus is and trusted him. And thus, as related to us in today's gospel, we have the outstanding miracle of the feeding of the vast multitude. Mayor Inde Sarah, please ask the Lord to give you the sharp eyes of St. John the Evangelist, so that in the Christian sense, you will be truly the Aguila ng Davao, able to serve us in good times and in bad. Brothers and sisters, it may seem that I am only focusing my thoughts on Mayor Inday Sara, but really it is not so. We will accompany her. At least I can speak for the Archdiocese of Davao. I will do my best to inspire our people in Davao to be with her, to be with all the newly elected leaders of our government, of our nation. We accompany them in our many different and varied ways to serve and to consider that our service to one another is truly a God-given gift. I will do my best to inspire our people here in Davao to come to the Eucharist always as food for sinners. In our frailty and weakness, in our meager resources, Inspired by our faith, as church, we participate in the noble task of nation building. We in Davao, we also constantly ask the Lord to give us the eyes of eagles so that our service to one another will truly be for the common good. All in all, my dear brothers and sisters, we thank the Lord for inspiring us to come to Him today in prayer and worship with our Mayor Indai Sara, who will soon be our Vice President. For in the Lord is our strength, in the Lord is our hope, in the Lord is mercy and compassion for us all, the Filipino people. Please stand. Together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers are faithful. Brothers and sisters, in our celebration of the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ, we commune with our Lord Jesus, who provides nourishment for our body and spirit. Full of trust, we now present our needs, and for every supplication, let us say, Nourish your people, Lord. Nourish your people, Lord that the members of the Church, guided by the Pope, bishops, and priests, will see and understand the great love of God in the Holy Eucharist and sincerely love the Lord in return by personal conversion and constant obedience to God's will. We pray. Nourish your people, Lord. That the Lord may grant our government leaders, especially Vice President-elect Sara Duterte Carpio, the grace to lead the nation towards unity and progress, where the peace and justice of the Kingdom of God truly reign. We pray. Nourish your people, Lord. That those who suffer, the sick and the hungry, will find the comfort and healing love of God in His real presence in the blessed sacrament of the altar. We pray. Nourish your people, Lord. That the Eucharist may become more and more the source of our strength and unity and commitment to one another. We pray. Nourish your people, Lord that the souls of our faithful departed will join the blessed in the home of the Father. We pray. Nourish your people, Lord. For our individual intentions, let us pray in silence. Father, listen to the prayers of your people. Keep nourishing us with the body and blood of your Son, that we may grow in holiness of life. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Amen. Please be seated.
please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, a duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by the sacred mystery. You make them holy so that the human race bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so, we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creation, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the host of angels, cry out and without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like that you fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, <clears throat> he took bread <clears throat> and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Romolo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
sigla Matapos kang yuraka ng mga masasamba Sumilang ang liwanag ng mga nawawala Tinapay ng buhay pagkain ng dukha Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bless the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Bishop Primando, Bishop Apigo, Archbishop Capalia, please join me in blessing our people. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This holy sacrifice of the Mass, this holy Eucharist is ended. Let us all go in joy and in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Thank you.